Well, good afternoon. Today's Thursday, Cornishman Day today. In the lot in, but it'll be all right. I've look around and kind of sitting by the put the heating on a bit because the temperature has dropped quite a bit today. But there we are. It's dry. We can get out and say shake the cobwebs off a little bit. As long as we're all okay, stay safe. That's the most important. Now, I'd like to say a very big thank you to Nancy from London. Thank you very much for your kind donation, which is actually which I'm trying to raise a bit of money for the local charities here. And uh, we're doing all right. We're doing home here now. We've got over 600 quid, so we're doing all right. We're going to hopefully share it out some length next week, but I will advertise you know, where the money's going. Um, but thank you, Nancy, and thank you for listening to the stories. Um, um, it's so kind, um, and everything is much appreciated. Now, I'm going to do a little um, story here today by Brenda Wooten first, and this one's called Relations. Father was at the table checking his football pools, all the homes and aways, and following the rules. Young Herbie came in through the door, all smiling and excited. Hello, says Da, what's up with you? You're looking some delighted. Congratulate me, Da, said Herb, for I found a love. Wow, that is handsome news, says Da. Who was he thinking of? His son just pulled his ear and blushed, his voice all soft and gooey. I've asked for Fanny Jenkin, she'd live over there too early. His father face was stony, my answer must be no. You see my son, it cannot be, I cannot allow it so. Why ever not, young Herbie cried. She's a handsome maid, he said. Oh, tell me Dad, what's wrong with her? But father shook his head. It's difficult to tell you, boy, and me your father like, but it was when I was young, and I'd had this ear bike. I used to go out now and then and take a little ride, and once or twice I found myself over to Truey side. And that is why, I must explain, my visits over Truey. She's sort of your relation, see, quite like a sister to me. The boy accepted sadly this awkward fact of life, and soon he met another maid he felt would make his wife. He told his father proudly he fancied Liz Trethaway, and found she, she must be cast aside another sister to he. The months went by and Irby strayed, only to face more ruin, for Sissy Francis over break was like a sister to him. Well, in despair, young Irby sat his head upon the table. He tried to joke, to joke a bit with Ma, but felt he wasn't able. What's the matter, boy? His mother said. You sickening, I wonder. You're thighing there like an adder, boy, and your face is black as thunder. Oh, I can't stand it, Ma, he cried. My heart is gone on strike, and it's all because of Feather. He and his bloomin' bike. For every maid I look upon... Be it Mousel or Trillister, my father I've been on his bike, and she's near my sister. But Ma was stiff with laughing, she ooted like a good un. So, that's what tis upset you. Don't worry, my old puddin', for you can wed the maid from Brake, and the one over from Troy. And don't you worry over Da, he's no relation to he. Now, this is another one by David Prowse. This one's called Legal Aid. My lord, you see before you the burglar, Ivan Irv, who seeks due compens compensation, as your honour will observe, from one who caused my client a mean and grievous harm by fitting door and window locks, a tripwire and alarm. These rendered Ivan's entry to the house of Mr Lee, both tricky and traumatic, as your worship will agree. Entailing great discomfort as he crawled across the green, and grass stains on his trousers, which are devilish to clean. Because of inconvenience to which my friend was put, on standing he was cramped and dropped the jemmy on his foot, which caused a howl of anguish and a clutching of the feet, attracting the attention of a bulldog down the street. 
It was in this situation with its elements of fear that the bulldog scaled the edge row and attacked him from the rear, the effects of which can still be seen with but a casual stare to the ample depth of cushions now deposed upon this chair. And so it was that panic-struck and hopeless in the night, my client had no other course but instantaneous flight. But forgetful of the tripwire in his efforts to abscond, he shortly made acquaintance with the goldfish in the pond. Bedraggled and confused, he found salvation and release in the warm and comfortable, comfortable clutches of the neighbourhood police. And responding in accordance with instructions and decree, they reassured my client and arrested Mr. Lee. It's sad and sorry told, and to redress the shame, we must show that British justice stands entitled to its name. What hope is there for burglars if, the moment they invade, they find themselves obstructed in pursuance of their trade? May I suggest, my lord, this court must pledge to make a stand against secure precautions which are getting out of hand. It's time to send a message that the cause shall not prevail, and we shall show no mercy in dispatching them to jail. And when you pass your sentence, may I furthermore suggest correction of an issue at my client's due request, just a matter of his property to which he has the right. Could he have his jemmy back, my lord? He's going out tonight. Thank you very much.